If I was Ramsdale, I'd be absolutely fuming at this. A project's never been run like this before. And, you know, the proof will be in the pudding this year. They need to get a lot, lot better on the pitch. Welcome back to Monday Vibes, one and all. Look who's joining me. It's Doogie Critchley. It's Henry Hill. I'm a little bit worse for wear today. My yeah, what is up that yeah. what is up that nose? <laughs> God knows. God knows. I just um got a little bit of a cold, so I might be leaning on these boys. A little bit of a cold. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna be leaning on these boys to do quite a bit of talking throughout today's episode because my voice kind of does seize up on me. Um Doogie, how are you? Good weekend? I'm good, thank you. Quite a good weekend. Yeah, I was on Uncle Duty's looking after my two-year-old niece. Two-year-olds are difficult, really difficult. There's a lot of anger in there because they can't really communicate. So there's a few tantrums, but we got through the weekend. Shout out all parents. Didn't really know how difficult <laughs> it was. Really is quite difficult with toddlers. Yeah. But yeah, all right, thanks. Talking of tantrums. Oh, yeah. <laughs> how no yours? tantrums from me, Calm mate. down now. Went to Wingfest. Yeah, the biggest sure. chicken wing festival in the UK. <laughs> <laughs> was it good? It was unbelievable. You entered triple figures, didn't you? If you no, I, no, I <laughs> you didn't I get like to hundred wings. No way, no way. There, was, was there, were, there were some blokes with like piles of wings, like bones, just to prove that. Unlimited uh, free wings. No, you have to pay for wings once you're in there. So um, you pay for the ticket to get in, and then you pay for the, what does the ticket get you? It gets you a free, gets you a trucker hat. <laughs> Is that what it gets? <laughs> it gets, you? gets you a trucker hat, and it gets you access to the biggest party. It was at the West Ham Stadium. By the way, this I found this quite funny. Wait, it was at the Olympic Park? It was at the Olympic Park. <laughs> <laughs> the amount of grown men walking around Stratford in like West Ham tops on just a non, non-footballing non Saturday yeah. is just... <laughs> Astonishing. Amazing. Like, and there are Hammers fans everywhere and they're very proud of it. They love their wings, mate. Uh, yeah, they did. They did. No, it was great. It was great. I oh, just want to quickly touch on the women's football as well. Yes. Because um, I really weekend. enjoyed that this weekend. Um, I think, as we're reporting... I, uh, talking uh, Zambia Reporting. Zambia have just won their first ever World Cup game yeah, male or female Zambia. which is cool and actually the Colombia Germany second half in particular is one of the best halves of football I've seen in a long long time like that. you remember when we were at, um, we the goal from Caicedo the Caicedo goal 18 years old already had like ovarian cancer bought by Manchester um, Real Madrid last year you know, has had some difficulties even leading up to the tournament. She's now got two goals, including an unreal goal. And then for Germany to go and score a penalty and then to come back and get a 97th minute headed winning, uh, winner yeah. from the corner, um, the fullback, I thought it was just epic. And do you, do you remember, because we went to Russia, those those Colombian fans and mental. Yeah. Like, Crazy. same again. They just packed out this stadium. 45,000 people just going absolutely bonkers. It, yeah. was, it was one of the great World Cup games that I've seen in a long time. Yeah, Columbia fans are nuts. Uh, but let's touch on some transfers, shall we? It. Because everybody will have seen the title today. Us talking about some surprising moves because there were some shock yeah. rumours or heavy rumours as well over the weekend, wasn't there? I mean... A few bombers. David Raya to Arsenal really came out of the blue for me. Obviously, we saw the links and we talked about the links, didn't we, on um, Transfer Talk last week. If you haven't seen that already, go and check that out about him to Bayern Munich. We might well have to slide that down the table yeah. this coming week because, I mean, now Arsenal are in control potentially. Yeah, not happening. I mean, I was quite surprised to read that Bayern Munich supposedly only ever offered him a loan move when, when he's got one year left on his deal. Why would Brentford ever accept that? Uh, and why would David Raya not look for the security? So Arsenal seem to have moved ahead in the pecking order. I agree with you. I am quite surprised, though. I don't know what the final fee will be yet. By the time this video goes live, maybe it'll be clearer. Um, but it feels like that money could potentially be better spent just because I don't think Ooh. Ramsdale was bad enough to warrant being replaced after that season last year. Look, I know he dipped towards the end of the year and it feels like everyone that had a bad end of the season, whether it's Ramsdale, Holding, Thomas Partey, Mikel has been quite ruthless in trying to recruit players that could potentially replace them. Party might start the start of the season, but you imagine that Declan Rice will eventually take his spot. And it feels like Ramsdale may be slightly suffering from that as well. He signed I, a new contract though, Ramsdale. Let's not forget, it was only very, very recently he signed a new long-term contract. Yeah. So it, and it doesn't mean the end of him at the club. And it's just quite unique to have two goalkeepers who I would say, I think David Raya had a better season last year than Ramsdale, but they're only two years apart and they're both going to want to be one, number one in the next few years. And it's yeah. rare to see in any top club, two goalkeepers of very similar standard and very similar ceiling, I would say. So I'm a little bit confused by this move. If I was Ramsdale, I'd be absolutely fuming at this. I mean, they're saying he's coming in to compete. Let's have it right. He's coming in to be number one. David Rye's not going to look at that, take that move, unless he's getting assurances that he's going to get the game time because he's got options. He does have options, I think. Ultimately, he can wait a, a year. Position. Yeah, and he can wait a year and go to a number of huge clubs. He's not going to go there just to sit behind Ramsdale. And we're talking about a goalkeeper that in Ramsdale... 
a lot of people think he should be England number one. According to transfer marks, he's one of the most expensive keepers in the world at the moment. And then suddenly he's about to get sort of usurped. I can't believe that this is... Uh, if I was him... I would have a. I'd if you were Ramsdale, but if, if I was Ramsdale, I'd be thinking about going. If I would you, yeah. even though you, you should not back himself. Come on, man. I just don't think you don't. You've how, got to back yourself for at least a season. To how often do you have? How often do you have like two top keepers working side by side? It's like mm. it's like in Formula One. You can't really have two top drivers in the same team. It just just doesn't seem it, to work. It's rare, but I think Ramsdale would back himself to compete with David Raya for that starting spot. I think David Raya definitely had a better season than Ramsdale last year, and I think probably is foundational wise a stronger goalkeeper you know you look at his save percentage it's definitely higher than Aaron Ramsdale but the way Aaron Ramsdale has built himself into that team and become a key component of how they how the structure works building up from the back I don't think it's necessarily a guarantee that Raya walks straight into that number one spot he's got to take Ramsdale's shirt and he might well take Ramsdale's shirt because Ramsdale does make errors we all know he makes errors but he's a key component to the to the build up from the back and David Raya was going to have to learn that structure before he just walks into the number one spot I think Ramsdale has to back himself to at least compete he can't walk this summer I think if Raya came you've got to at least for a season have it out with him and say who's going to be the number one it's a battle mm. I think Raya probably at the end of the season en ends up with a shirt I think he is a better goalkeeper but I don't think it's a guarantee he walks straight in and is immediately number one. Yeah. The worrying thing for Ramsdale is that Rara is very good with his feet. You know, he grew up playing futsal and yeah, he's just an expert at it. So it doesn't feel like that's going to be like a sticking yeah. point that, oh, Ramsdale can do the footwork, whereas Rara can't. Um, I actually think they're very similar goalkeepers. I don't know who I'd say is going to be better in two, three years time. I think Rara is probably ahead of him right now and definitely had a better season. But I am just a little bit concerned. But for, from Ramsdale's perspective and it just feels like if it's getting to that £40 million fee that Brentford are looking for then could they use this money more effectively next summer to sign say another top striker or someone like that it might just backfire they're not short on cash down they the Arsenal. line they're not short on cash Arsenal they've spent a lot they've spent a lot and they've not sold particularly well over the last few years as well so it does matter eventually yeah I, I think that they probably have enough wiggle room to get this transfer done and then look we all think they're going to finish in the Champions League spots again don't we like, yeah. I've got I'm probably going to have them second in the table behind Manchester City I think that even with David Raya if they were to sell Flo Balogun let's say for £40 million I think that that covers the striking spot next summer in terms of being able to start bring, it, bring in a name you, it, Evan Ferguson is going to be on the market next yeah. summer I, look, look, I could easily be proved wrong but I just think this transfer is going to cause more drama and problems than it's worth or competition perhaps, never is a problem man competition goal, is never a problem in goal it's a, I think it's a I little think bit it's different. good to have a packing order in goal yeah, I do think it's helpful. It, like no other club has got two goalkeepers of such similar quality. I agree on the one-two debate, kind of, but I do think you know, look at Manchester United recently. Obviously, my United fans are going to bring this up. I think when David de Gea isn't being pushed or wasn't being pushed, he was way below the level of when a player like Sergio Romero was competing for that starting spot. I think. Having a second goalkeeper that pushes you might make Ramsdale even better. Like mm. he knows Matt Turner's the number two, is never going to start a game over him. Having David Raya there might take Ramsdale to new levels. I honestly think competition is is good even in the goalkeeper department. I don't think it's, it's a bad thing. Let's see. The proof will be in the pudding. It yeah. will. Thanks very much. <laughs> Let us know what you think, Arsenal fans, about the David Raya move. I think it's I think it's a really really positive bit of business. Uh, another surprising move kind of came out of nowhere more than more than surprising. So I do think. They've needed a centre-back following the Wesley Fofana injury, but Axel de Sassi. Manchester yeah. United and Newcastle were supposed to be in for him, but Chelsea have got the deal done. £38 million. I, I, we were saying before, I don't understand Chelsea's finances at all, how they can keep plucking out. Well, they've sold £250 million of the yeah, players. But, but they had, yeah, but then they'd spent £600 million last year. So, <laughs> I mean, come on. <laughs> it's, it's not. People seem to forget like previous transfer windows and what's happened. But yeah, listen... He's a good player. I think there's a reason he's been linked with a lot of these top clubs. Um, I'm beginning to like sort of this new era of that back line at Chelsea. Certainly if Colwell stay, stays, Paddy Achille as well, and then reunited with De Sassi. So they are. Thiago Silva's probably got what, one more year maybe at the top. We level. say that every year and yeah. then he's the best centre-back at the club. I agree, I agree. But I mean, it is approaching... 40. Yeah, 40. <laughs> yeah, the tipping point. So yeah, I, I do think this is good. I think this probably spells the end for Trevor Shalaba. Um... At, at Chelsea but I mean just to give like De Sassi a bit more of a profile of a player he's good in the air like really strong aerial win rates and uh, I think what we've always seen from him at Monaco is his ability to like break out with the ball he, he's very comfortable sort of dribbling and being a bit 
showing a bit more adventure really as a centre half. So yeah, I think this is stylistically, this is kind of what you want in the modern centre back hunt yeah. uh, for Chelsea. And I like it. Yeah, five year deal. It's not a huge, it's not a massive fee at all. Monaco have already placed him with Salisu, who we could, we'll get onto a bit later. But yeah, it's I th for that fee, his profile. I think it's pretty I solid. Think he's transfer. a good age for that Chelsea backline as well because you've got a really old centre back in Thiago Silva at 39, and then you've got a lot of young centre backs. You think Badia Shield, very young, uh, Wesley Fafana, Fafana, who's now injured, very young, Levi oh. Colwell, extremely young. I do think you need somebody who's approaching their prime to come into that centre back lineup, especially following the Fafana injury. At this stage of his career, I mean, we've seen him have so many problems. There has to be some question mark over, like how high level can Fafana continue to play at because it's now double injuries to his knees isn't it he's had the broken ankle as well it's a shame for him it's very very tough for him but I, I think they probably did have to bring one more centre back into the club especially if they don't see Chalibur as being the level enough to, to compete with Thiago Silva for that starting spot yeah it's a bit of a shame to see the end of Trevor Chalibur because his, his, well, his first sort of breakout appearance was so positive that Zach Jalab was like we've got the new John Terry I remember after his first game I think it was of last year what a quote that was but yeah Trevor Chalibur <laughs> I think the, the fact that he can play in a back three the fact he can play it at right back if he's forced to and it's just another Chelsea Academy graduate you know after Mount after Loftus cheek you know potentially Chalaba leaving in the same Conor summer Gallagher. potentially Conor Gallagher as well it feels like you know I think uh, De Sassi is going to be about the 21st or the 22nd signing made by the Bowley group since coming into the club it is an enormous turnover it is a project that has never been a project's never been run like this before and you know the proof will be in the pudding this year they need to get a lot lot better on the pitch i would expect them you know they have to finish kind of top six after this level of change after bringing in one of the premier leagues you know established managers and pochettino should hit the ground running um, but it just feels like chalaba has been a victim of i think unnecessary overspending in an mm. area where they don't potentially need to well, when they are particularly missing still a defensive midfielder I know this is what I was about to say you know it's another signing without signing a defensive midfielder we're what 13 days out from their opening day fixture it's at wild. Liverpool now and they still don't have a number 6 to play alongside Enzo they, they just they are so hell bent on getting Caicedo through the door but Brighton just keeps saying to them you're yeah. going to have to pay 100 million and I actually think it's fair enough if you look at the money being splashed around if you look at the money that Chelsea have been willing to spend when pushed into a corner of Enzo Fernandez in the past I think Brighton are well in their rights to say no that is the price tag and the, but there are alternatives like we even like profiled a few like a short well, last week first choice anyway was it yeah, first choice I, I can't believe what like they're so honed in on this guy like maybe he could be I think he'd be a great signing if you get him through the door but if it's not happening they need to start looking elsewhere but the issue is, is they wanted Agate to start with let's not forget and he's gone to PSG they're now at second choice with Moises Caicedo if they choose not to go to Caicedo they're at them maybe third or fourth choice set defensive midfielder do you want to spend 60 70 million on your fourth choice defensive midfielder I think you need to though if you're not going to get anyone else in they look so short of particular experience I wouldn't I mean you could say quality as well, but we haven't seen enough of these guys to say quality necessarily, but it's definitely experience. I mean, I think Conor Gallagher's their most experienced midfielder in there, and he's, what, 23 with two, three years of Premier League experience, two of which have been on loan. Mm. So it, it, they just need that midfielder in. Go back to Benfica and pay up for Florentino Luis and get him alongside Enzo in the midfield. He does all the things that Caicedo does. Yeah, I mean, I, I I would be slightly worried about the midfield situation of Forest Chelsea. Yeah, I, I, like that, I think I said it'll end up getting done, but it's just going to get done for like an, such an the exorbitant fee. they originally fee. asked for, yeah. Yeah, that it's, it's going to be comical and it's going to get done really late in the window. Uh, the final really surprising one, I suppose, was Usman Dembele. Mm. I mean, out of the blue, 50 million euro buyout clause we've talked about for a while now. I think that actually changes to 100 million euros in the next 48 hours, doesn't it? So this deal's got to get done really quickly. Reports as well that that 50 million euros is actually split, isn't it? It's 25 million euros to Barcelona, 25 million euros to the player and his agent. So Amazing. Barca are losing a huge amount of money on yeah. this one, Dembele, however you look at it. And PSG are signing yet another injury prone player. Yes, <laughs> although when he is fit, he is still absolutely electric. I think he's probably in that slight bracket down from Salah and Saka as the best right winger in the world. Like he, he is really, really phenomenal when he's at full fitness. It is unfortunately far too rare. I think he's missed 119 games in five and a half years or six years, sorry, at Barcelona. But last year, 12 league goal contributions. I think only Rafinha and Lewandowski got more than that. They played significantly more minutes. It just feels like Barcelona are taking a little bit of a risk here because when he is fit, 
that is one of the few areas of their squad they've got genuine competition for places, particularly in the forward line as well. But they don't have a choice today because he's got a release clause. He's got a release clause as well, but as you say, half that fee is going to their own player because they didn't give him a signing on bonus last summer <laughs> because of the finances. So still it's Bartomeu coming to bite them in the bum. Um, with the financial ruin that he left at that club. I really like Osman Dembele as a player. If he can stay fit at PSG, I think he'll make a massive difference there. Bad news for Marco Asensio. Do you think you he makes a massive th difference? Do you I honestly think he, think he makes a massive difference? I think he's a brilliant because what player. is a massive difference for PSG? It's going to a Champions League final winning Champions League. Oh, I'm not saying he makes a massive difference in terms of you know their plan over the next uh, year, necessarily. Particularly if they lose Mbappe and Messi. It's very difficult to see them progressing as a club next year. But they could be in a better place in two, three years' time with Usman Dembele rather than Messi. So I don't think it's a bad idea to bring in a player of that quality. If he finally sorts out the injury issues, which is almost impossible to do, you know, it's not his fault he's been so injury prone. There is a genuinely world-class player in there. I just feel sorry for Asensio because he looked like he was going to have a run at the first team there. But again, Asensio picks up a number of niggling injuries as well. So, yeah, it's just good depth for PSG. Yeah, I, I think he's a fabulous player, but I think a front line that you're reliant on Neymar and Dembele for is a recipe for absolute disaster like I just I, if I was PSG I would not be signing players that have an injury record like Usman Dembele's partner with Neymar I still think for that fee though <coughs> to kind of touch on everything that Doogie's just said completely right like he this guy is incredible when he's on on song and I think maybe even a fresh start he's not been on song for long enough he was really good when he's fit he's last fine, year he's fine yeah when he's fit it's just yeah, but such like you said words. if he can dove, if him and Asensio can dovetail with each other then it's fine Competition's good. You were saying it just... Competition's just, really good if it's fit to competition. Like, if you saw the can stay fit, it's going to be a great signing. But I think when you've got a player that you need to rely on in the chat to go deep into a Champions League, because that's all they care about. Nobody cares if he wins a league title there. To, to rely on around the February time when we're at Champions League quarterfinals yeah, and I've, he's injured yet again, I think people will look back on this and go, why did they sign another injury-prone player? Similar, similar to what you are saying about Chelsea, it is surprising that PSG haven't done more to sign a striker, like an all-out striker. Like you, they, they, they obviously put in that Hoyland bid, which was capped at 50 million. They weren't going to go any higher. Uh, and, but yeah, they, they still need to get a striker in through the door. Because, so, but I guess if that Mbappe money runs in, then they'll be, have a free reign to kind yeah. of do I think that, that it, maybe it's getting to the stage with the striker as well, where they were like, look, we need another experienced forward in here who can instantly hit the ground running when he is fit. So they went for Ismael Dembele because he is a, a goal contributor in the final third. You know, you saw him the other day scoring in El Clasico, scored a wonderful goal. Um, yeah. So I think he can make a big difference there when fit. Yeah. Uh, right, should we go to Hoyland then? We mentioned him just then, didn't we? Uh, a completed deal at Damn. the weekend for Manchester United for a monstrous £64 million plus £8 million in add-ons. Uh, seems like a huge fee, boys. I haven't really watched him at Atalanta. I mean, we've all watched the highlight comps, haven't we? We've all watched the no. sort of goal comps, but we have. I have not watched a full 90 of him at Atalanta. It is, Barely played one. It is crazy fee. Nine goals last year. He's been on a great streak like ever since he went to Sturm Graz. I think it was from Copenhagen. It he's, was, yeah. He's, he's, he's got better and better. Broke into that sit team last year. Good, a good, good Atalanta side. Fun, fun attack anyway. And I, I, I mean, I've watched, watched him in the Denmark when he scored a hat-trick as well. And he got like five goals in two games or something crazy like that. He is an exciting player. I, I, I think it is a mental amount of money to spend on someone with one year top-level experience. But... This is the thing, like, I, I, as much as I think that, I'm like, well, it is Manchester United. The United they've got money to, is real, isn't they've it? Got, you know, they've got money to spend. I think this is a better signing than Anthony was, and Anthony was a massive overspend. So, yeah, I mean, sure, you've, you've finally addressed a centre-forward position, and if it works well, then you've got a guy in that front line for another 10 years at least, because he is young and exciting. He's, he's powerful, risk. he's powerful, he's quite strong. I think, I think, yeah, hopefully, he needs to hit the ground running well, and then build on from there really but yeah it, it, I think you were saying he's got great players around him yeah. uh, there's going to be United chances created for a huge him. amount of chances like a huge huge amount of chances so you think Bruno Fernandes is, is the highest chance creator in the entire league I think nobody underperformed in fact two clubs Chelsea and Everton underperformed XG last season more than Manchester United and you think about that Everton forward line and the comedy Chelsea forward line last season so he's going to have a huge amount of chances put on his plate I just yeah, I'm very excited because it's the sort of thing where it's like unknown, I suppose. You're like paying a huge fee for this like relative unknown. Like, what is he going to bring to the club? Um, 
I just hope he doesn't get kind of eaten up by that sort of mm. Haaland versus Hoyland comparison, which everybody's going to make. It's going to be tiresome. It's going to be boring, but it's just going to be a thing. Mm. So he's just got to be his own sort of guy. I really hope he's a big enough character to deal with that because it's not going to be easy as a 20-year-old coming into Manchester United and being asked to lead the line which he's going to have to do because of Martial's injury record. Uh, I'm very excited, though. What do you think, Deuce? Uh, I'm kind of with you on that. I think I tweeted at the weekend, like, I th I'd advise any English football fan, even though they won't, I'd advise Man United fans to show patience. Like, this, yeah. is, this is the most talked about club in England by a distance still. The pressure is enormous. And I really just hope that he doesn't get swallowed up after five games. You know, if he misses a couple of one-on-ones, you know, we saw with Darwin Nunes last year, like we're very quick to effectively bully people on social media uh, and people think it's all lighthearted. But I think it probably does get to players in, in various different ways. Uh, and this is a guy who only became a regular at Atalanta from sort of January, at least a regular starter, at least. Um, looks really promising. His link up with Adam Ola-Lukman uh, last year was at times brilliant. He attacks the front post really well. His hold up plays a little bit clunky at times, but that's not what he's being signed for. I think yeah. there's be a, there'll be enough ball players feeding him uh, and hopefully he gets a number of opportunities to show his pace and behind as well because it is absolutely electric so i really hope it works out well for him but as i say just a little bit of patience yeah Asalanta, by the way have signed a replacement already el yeah. Torre from almeria who was really fun great feed last for season. almeria by the way yeah he, yeah really Huge good feed for them but it just shows like a smart business They've sold a guy for an absolute premium. Someone was saying they're like the Brighton of Serie A in the way that they negotiate and drive quite a high bargain at Atalanta. They've got a replacement him. I mean, just like think about West Ham struggling to get anyone in through the door. They're like, what, what do you make of that out of interest? Like the, the lack of organisation or planning that seems to have gone into this like Rice replacement over the... Over I mean, the yeah, that seems bizarre, doesn't it? Like the, it's the first time I can remember in Man United's like years that United have got a lot of their business done by the end yeah. of July. West Ham to have not got a player through the door, what are we, th 41 days in, something like mm. that now and Rice to have left is like the other end of the spectrum. Isn't it? It's, it's, what, two it's weeks? totally two bizarre weeks. and obviously they've reportedly had approaches for Harry Maguire turned down at the weekend, £20 million turned down there. It's beginning to look desperate almost. Uh, like. I thought that was the right thing for United to reject that, that money. I don't think that that's enough money for Harry Maguire. I would rather keep him than have 20 mil in the bank I think he's absolutely fine fourth choice centre pack at any club in the league uh, he'd be good for West Ham but he's worth more to West Ham than 20 mm. million pounds you know mm. I know they've got 100 million pound in the bank why would they accept 20 million pounds it just seems a ridiculous uh, decision but yeah just going back to Rasmus Hoyland uh, I'm really really excited so I hope he's got the character to kind of deal with the pressure um, but he's going to get a lot of chances he's going to get a lot of minutes this coming season and I kind of just back Eric Ten Hag to be a good enough coach to make him work like his frailties or his def deficiencies at such a young age should be moldable and changeable. So I'm kind of hopeful that Eric Ten Hag can kind of improve the things he's bad at and make the things he's good at even better. Uh, so yeah, fingers crossed he, he, he kind of hits the ground running. Uh, let's go to some more Premier League moves, shall we? Because Matthias Franca has gone to Palace. Big yeah, fee. You did a bit of digging on this, Henry, didn't you? Ah, it's cool. I mean, listen... Brazilian... We just, literally just wrote about the fact that like... English clubs are going for Brazilian talent more than ever yeah. at the moment. I think there were six direct Brazil Serie A to Premier League transfers last year, and already this is another one. It's, it's saying quite a lot when Crystal Palace were able to go in and pick up a Brazilian wonder kid. They're saying this guy is one of the best, is the best young guy out of Flamengo since Vinicius. So you know, and he's got Palace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's going to Palace. It's I quite mean, a big fee though, isn't it? To be fair, it is. Well, it's like reports of how much it is: twenty-six <laughs> million pounds, nineteen year, years old. Some are saying it's seventeen million with add-ons. Apparently, if he gets nominated for the Ballon d'Or, they have to pay up like another four million. So let's see. He's 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 more of like a wide forward who can cut inside. He's big. He's like six foot. He's not this kind of diminutive. So is he the Zaha winger. replacement? I think he's the Zaha replacement. He plays out on the left as well, and that tends to be where he starts out, cutting inside from the left. Six goals in 2022 in the Brazil um, season. So, yeah, I mean, it's like when you watch highlight reels of any young Brazilian and they're all just doing tricks and it yeah. looks, it looks, it looks wicked, you think, oh, yeah, this guy's going to be nuts. But, I mean, listen, I think it's a gamble worth that you can make. Like Newcastle wanted him, other big sides were in for him too. It's it's going to be fun, if anything. Yeah, um, yeah we still haven't need a striker though, man. Yeah, absolutely. I completely agree with you. But, I mean... If this goes well, this is like a £75 million player. Like, yeah. I think yeah. Palace fans are one of the... There's a few fan groups in the Premier League at the moment. I think Sheffield United, who will come on to Wolves, Everton, Palace, they were probably a little bit worried by their lack of business. I think Jefferson Lerma was Palace's only signing. Um, 
so far up until Franca arrived. But I heard that Al Hamada, I think his name is, who they signed in midfield last year, has actually been playing on the right uh, during Elise's injury during preseason. That actually looked really promising. Um, but yes, that, those rumours around Michael Elise as well, a little bit concerning as well. Don't want to lose Zaha and Elise in the same window. Yeah, quite fortunate that Eberich Eze as well had an absolutely stunning end of the season. He's actually playing really well in preseason as well. He's got a great goal over the weekend. Uh, so they're going to rely big time on Eberich Eze, I think. But yeah, Elise's injury record, horrendous, might leave. Zaha left, still not got enough goals up front. I don't mind Cech de Kure and Jefferson Lerma as a midfield too. I think that's pretty solid. The centre-backs look pretty solid, but I do think they need a striker before the end of the window. Uh, another completed deal. Your boys have finally got someone through the door. Yes. Calvin <laughs> is back Big on Cal. UK shores he after... Is. Uh, yeah, not a great stint at Ajax. You know, yeah, massive fee for Ajax to pay, and it just didn't work out there. But I, I actually think that sometimes it's not like a massive disgrace to say... I went there, I tried it, you know, I couldn't fit their brand of football. They obviously want to play extremely high possession-based football, don't they? It didn't suit Calvin Bassey, who is a real physical specimen, as we saw at Rangers, you know, so dominant in defensive transition. But when he's on the ball, maybe he's not quite as strong. So yeah. maybe he will suit you. I'm, I'm completely happy with this. I just want someone... We're going to be conceding a lot of chances. Last year, we did concede a lot of chances. I think XG-wise, we were the most... We should have conceded more than anyone. So we just want... A younger guy in there. He's very mobile, physical. That's what I want. He's going to make a ton of clearances. Um, and actually, his passing numbers, obviously, for a guy that's been playing for Ajax, are really strong. Like he, you know, yeah. he's really accurate with the ball. He's he can he can break out with it. He's, he's comfortable driving forward. So, yeah, 22 million euros, whatever. S slight so is loss. Is he your Tosin replacement? Um, yes. Yeah, yeah, I'd say so. I mean, Tim Ream is now like 35. He's just had a, bit, a big injury. Yeah. Um, ECG ops there as well. But yeah, I think this is the Tosin replacement. Apparently Tosin wants to go to see either Monaco or to uh, Tottenham, the two offers he's got on the table at the moment. He's leaning towards Monaco apparently. But then Monaco have signed a centre back, which Yeah, Salisu's um, coming. Salisu. So yeah, so it's 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 an interesting one. But yeah, I, I really like this. We need we needed another body in yeah. that back line. I think Tosin is replaceable, in all honesty. I really like him, but yeah, Kevin Bassi. I think this is the fresh start he needs. He said he had a really horrible time with social media last year, just getting absolutely hammered by the Ajax fans and every, all the pundits. Whatnot. And Ajax had a pretty bad season in, in really total. Bad, yeah. It wasn't just him, was it? It was like that whole squad. Club wide. So, yeah, so fresh start at Fulham. Come on. Yeah, it's never easy. It's <laughs> bit like, you know, Eric Ten Hag leaving the club. It was never easy to replace, like, what is effectively a legendary manager there who's won multiple league titles. The managerial situation was a farce towards yeah, the end of the season. Schroeder it was, was all over the place, mm. wasn't it? Uh, and the preseason has been horrendous for Ajax as well. So, you know, it doesn't necessarily look like it's the easiest place to play your football right now, Ajax. And I think, given that Silva stayed, it looks like Mitrovic is back in training now, doesn't it? Um, and Calvin Bass is through the door. And I think Fulham, at the moment, look like one of the safer sides in that sort of relegation dog. Yeah, game. I think the fact there are some obviously worse teams makes it okay I think we'll still finish in the bottom five but that's fine yeah I mean let's talk about a few of those obviously worse teams I mean Luton have got quite a lot of business done haven't the they Joe Tomlinson special I know Ryan Giles I can't remember whether I suggested somebody might be able to tell me as, uh, on the comments here who I suggested Ryan Giles to on a Sunday Vise recently it might have been Luton it might have been someone else but I think He's this good. is an amazing signing for Luton oh, absolutely definitely if not the second best left back in the championship last season. Now, he was obviously helped by the fact he was playing, you know, under Michael Carrick's tutelage yeah. in that sensational Middlesbrough side that was kind of playing beautiful football. But I'm a little bit surprised Wolves will let him go. And I'm sure Wolves fans will be angry with this. I know that the Bueno and they've got Ryan Nuri, but... Ryan Nuri is supposedly leaving. Yeah, and, Bu and Bueno has looked good. But Ryan Giles was a massive prospect there. Wolves have had a really, really bad window so far. And to let him go, you know, for a, like a tiny amount, really, £5 million to Wolves, I'm shocked at. Mm. Yeah. Apparently he knows Rob Edwards because Rob Edwards was part of the Wolves coaching staff for a while. 11 assists last year. Okay, he played lots of minutes. Yeah. Uh, over the champ. But yeah, as you said, in, in that attacking style... He was brilliant. I think Luton do play sort of wing back system. Uh, Rob Edwards is a, proving himself to be a great coach. So I think 23 years old, as you said, five million pounds. I like this. I mean, marvelous Nakamba. He was good for them. He's he's stuck he's around. Back, yeah. Tahif Chong. That could, that I'm excited to see what he can finally do. Sort of given a proper crack at the top level. Played so, well yeah, last I mean, year, didn't he? I think I think Luton are going to be. 
I've no idea what to expect. I've no idea what's coming from Luton next year. It could be fun. It could be fun. It's definitely going to be a tough place to go because the Premier League obviously granted dispensation, didn't they, to Kenilworth Road for not having the undersoil heating. So that looks like that's going to save them a little bit of money in the short term anyway. Uh, but I think there's like teams, what, plenty of teams have worse windows than them. Yeah. Like Sheffield United. Oh. Yeah, big time. Losing Ilya Il- 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 die at the weekend to, Mar- to Marseille. Incredible, Goodness incredible. Me. I think it was around, was it around 20 million pounds in the end, which is a big fee for Sheffield United. So hopefully they reinvest that. But the way that Sheffield fans, Sheffield United fans, sorry, have, have reacted to that just goes to show the quality of the guy and how keen they were not to lose him. I think the, you know, there's Sheffield United fans up in arms saying, you know, we're on for a derby repeat uh, from 2007, eight, was it? Yeah. Um, so yeah, it, it is really concerning for Sheffield United, their star player leave, leaving this close to the window, end of the window rather, um, but a real coup for Marseille as well, given his age um, and, it, and his profile as well, you know, with the Bemian coming in, adding a lot of experience, can dog beer as well. Uh, it feels like Marseille have, have had a really yeah. quietly good window. Last last week we were talking about them getting Ishmael Assar for mm. like 30 Ismail million. Ismail of course, yeah. Yeah, so they've got two, well, their wingers, two Senegalese wingers next year. It's going to be great. But I mean, he's got he's had such an interesting career. Yeah, yeah. Um, he was at Rising Ballers. I he, was, know. he was playing Sunday, Sunday League for Rising Ballers. Like, this is a... Sam Abaski, there's still time. So, yeah, Sam. Sam was quite moved when he saw this in the <laughs> in the in the news last week. But yeah, to go from like Boreham Woods, Hyde United, and Rising Ballers in th- three years to like Champions he was the League best football. Player in the championship last year. I just apparently really? yeah, 14 goals and 11 assists. Apparently they'd filmed like an announcement video. He was going to sign a new contract. They'd <laughs> signed like an announcement video for it. The chairman was there and everything. And then he had a last minute change of heart and has gone back to Marseille where he played youth football. So yeah, but you're right, Marseille next year, so fun. But what a story, what a story for Ndaya. Yeah, mud for Sheffield United though. It's so hard to find a goal scorer at that level, isn't it? Like yeah. you think of the clubs that have come up, Mitrovic managed to maintain goal level, obviously Ivan Tony managed to maintain goal level, but trying to find a goal scorer to get you 10 goals to keep you in the league. Yeah, they look a good bet for 20th. <coughs> yeah, I have to say it, it's not looking good for them. Uh, but it's also, I think, not looking great for Wolves. We, we just mentioned Ryan Giles leaving there. What is going on there? I still not signed the midfielders they need to replace Matinho and Neves. You know, Raul Jimenez has gone to Fulham. Diego Costa's been released. Diego Costa's Less been drama, released. Yeah, Ryan Aitnori supposedly close to leaving. Nathan Collins has left. Uh, there's been interest in Max Kilman, but it looks like he's going to stay now. But that is a huge, you know, loss of talent. And, you know, Wolves... I've seen some fans on social media be like, look, we are definitely going to sign a couple of players potentially in the next, Doherty. this week. They've got Doherty. Um, but it's not enough at the moment. And it's given, that, well. given that Lopetegui was considering leaving at the start of the summer due to FFP issues and then was persuaded to stay, you know, I'd, I'd love to know what's going on in his head right now. Yeah, absolutely. I think they've got United at Old Trafford first game of the season as well. So <laughs> not, not the easiest start. Uh, let's go to some European moves, shall we? Because AC Milan continue their superb window. They're cooking. Yunus Musa through the door. I, I'd love to know what Maldini and Masada what their vision was I think it's a lot of their targets to yeah. be honest do you think so yeah Cause, supposedly because the whole point was they supposedly wanted big investment and they've got to done it they've, I know it's unbelievable but Okafor, yeah. Okafor, Chuck Vesey Yunus Musa. I mean Yunus Musa is an interesting profile because he can play on the right wing of course as well he can play a little bit further forward but it's a really dynamic central midfield I mean we saw in the World Cup alongside Tyler Adams and McKenney that there's a lot of potential in this guy I don't think he's the finished article by any means but what is it 20 million euros it's a pretty good fee Yeah. Um, and yeah they look like they've now now just got so much legs throughout that team whether it's Tamora and Kalulu at the back Teo Hernandez amazing athlete Rafa Leao out front Okafor's a better athlete than Giroud Chuck Vesey's obviously absolutely rapid uh, and, and Loftus-Cheek Reinders and, and Musa in midfield Pulisic 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 as well yeah, you know, that, you know Pulisic. hopefully has a little bit of um, a better season this year as well so I think Milan are looking really good to challenge for the Scudetto yeah it's the USA dynamic duo isn't exactly. it Yunus Musa and Christian Pulisic in the, that side they're kind of rinsing La Liga aren't they mm. of like the, of the B-level La Liga sides they, they just got in just, Chukwesi Yunus Musa they're not pay- overpaying for anyone. They're paying yeah. like reasonable fees. It's it's quite remarkable when you consider some of the fees that we've been talking about. For them to wrap up all of these signings we've just mentioned for about 110 million euros, and then to have also sold Tenali, I think Rebic is on his way to Bajiktas. So like they're clearing out the de- deadwood. They've banked one big sale from some. They probably didn't want to sell anyway, but then they've reinvested it absolutely magnificently. I'm so excited to watch they this Milan it, team. They needed yeah. it because I know they got to the Champions League semi-final, but it was an incredibly disappointing. Yeah. Papering over a lot of cracks in that squad as well. It was very, very reliant on one player and Rafa Liao. But in 
now it feels like that historical pull of Milan and their success in the last couple of years with that Scudetto and Champions League semi-final. You know, emerging players want to go to Milan as their next yeah. destination. That's really promising. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, another bit of business, Mo Salasu to Monaco. 15 million euros. You guys were looking at him. Four years. Yeah. I you mean, don't need two left-footed centre-backs, mate. Come on. We, we don't. We don't. Oh, Would I, you have rather Salasu or Bassi? I'm, I'm, I'm neither here or there, really. I like, I liked Salisu, and actually, I thought he was more clanger prone than he was last year. According to Sofa Score, only like one error that led to a shot. But uh, yeah, I mean, listen, it's like, it's hard to look good in that Southampton side, which was just getting absolutely hammed. So <laughs> it's, um, <laughs> yeah, I think this is a fine. 15 million euros. He was proven in La Liga. He was pretty good for Southampton at the best part. I think this is a really smart piece of business by Monaco. Southampton are holding out some money. You know, 30 million pounds they want for uh, Liveramento. They want 50 for Lavia. They want 50 for Ward Prowse. They're holding out for some money because they know they've got a strong championship squad. Mm. If they if they hold on to these players, you know, even players like Che Adams uh, and Adam Armstrong, proven championship operators, proven championship goal scorers. I think before moving to Southampton, Adam Armstrong had the best uh, XG per 90 yeah. of any player in the championship ahead of Ivan Tony. So but these players can score goals at championship level. They've got a fun manager through the door as well, Russell. Mm, Russell, uh, Martin. Russell Martin. His... Uh, Call the first names only now, yeah? <laughs> Big Russ. Uh, yeah, no, thanks for that, Diggs. <laughs> <laughs> no, he, he, his Swansea side, like, okay, they didn't produce results, but their passing game, they were like the most exciting, uh, they were the nicest team to watch in the championship <laughs> in terms of like playing style. And hopefully you can add that into a Southampton side with the players that you just mentioned. Yeah. I think Southampton could be really fun next year. Uh, so carry on then, let's go to Spain. Sergio Reggio, Danny van der Beek to Sociedad. Big shoes to fill for Donny van der Beek. David Silva's obviously retired. Yeah, that ACL problem. Yeah, I mean, David Silva, what a player. I absolutely love David Silva. One of the best technicians the league has ever seen. It's got to be in the conversation for, you know, the best of uh, the Premier League history, at least top 10 in his position. I think he's an absolutely special, special player. And even last year was very good for Real Sociedad, but injury issues have kind of dominated the end of his career. And it's a little bit of a shame. But Donny van der Beek, needs a fresh start. Real Sociedad would be an amazing landing spot for him. I'm quite surprised they're in for him, given how little football he's played. I think the most league starts he's made since joining Man United is five. And that was in the season that he also went on loan to Everton. So there's just not been a lot of, sorry, not been a lot of football there for him. Uh, and Sergio Reguilon as well needs to get his career back on track. Had a bad injury last year at Atletico Madrid. Never really got a look in there. But at Real Madrid was, was really promising at points. And even for Spurs, you know, you know, Danny Pate, Spurs fan, FD's resident Spurs fan in the office, would always say, very good player until he gets to the final third and then he just can't pick out the right pass. But is, you know, there's a lot of energy there. There's a lot of defensive willingness. So I hope he can get back on track as well. But for Real Sociedad, it feels like it shows a bit of the strength of the league right now that they're having to shop around the dregs. I of think the Donny would probably be alone with an option as well. I'm mm. not sure they could... They're Champions League as well, yeah, aren't they? Full. So... It's surprising. No, no, by the way, no one's going to care about this. But the fact that Osasuna have had their ban from the Conference League overturned this weekend is, delighted. is huge. <laughs> Osasuna in European football. Let's go. Just while we're on Sergio Reguilón, what do we think of Tottenham at the moment? Because I thought you, you know for the Tottenham chant, though. Uh, <laughs> you know, the oil, oily sailors. You know, is that at what the, you're calling at them? the weekend, the, the reports emerged that they, I think it was in the Athletic or maybe the Times, that the centre back search is very much grinded to a halt. Van der Ven seems like it might be off. Mm. Uh, tap sober just tap just sober. pay 30 million for Van der Ven. I don't know what they're doing. I don't tap, know. What... Tap sober potentially on the rocks as well. Obviously today, as we we talk, Harry Kane apparently a meeting with Daniel Levy and, and the Bayern Munich higher ups. What do we make of Tottenham summer this year after the back of Sergio Reguilón potentially leaving too? Not good. Yeah, good. I would say that the last week or so makes it less likely that Kane will leave because obviously the mood around the club has taken a big dive since the sort of Postacoglu happiness of the arrival, Madison going through the door so early. Oh, we're looking at centre-backs. No centre-backs arrive. It feels like Levy just can't sell Kane right now. I think it would just take the ultimate dip to morale. Obviously, he should sell Kane, but it just doesn't feel like that's going to happen. So I think Postacoglu has a right to be a little bit frustrated with how little he's been backed. Yeah, I think in the centre-back department particularly, because they've needed centre-backs for ages. They tried Longley last year, didn't work, did they? They've let Longley go back, haven't made that permanent, and then haven't 
sign a replacement. Like in preseason, we see Ben Davis playing there again. And a yeah. flat back four with Pedro Porro and Adoji as the, as the full backs, neither of which are a full back. It's got like a recipe it's, for a disaster. It's really, really difficult for Ange. So you think Harry Kane should be kept now at this stage? Well, I just think he will be kept. I don't think he should. I think the longer it goes, the more likely he is to leave. Like the long, I just think the longer these conversations continue, I don't think Bayern would be... I think we would have seen news coming out of Germany that they were pulling out of their interest if if this wasn't a realistic goer. I think the fact that they're, they're going, I think, three bids now, isn't it? I think if this wasn't realistic, Bayern would have pulled out a long time ago. But season starting in two weeks, what, four weeks to the end of the window? It's a problem for Spurs. Oh, it's a huge problem. But if they come in at 100 mil... Yeah, I think, think he's going to go. Do you think he's? Go- but at the moment, aren't they talking like eighty? It feels like they're struggling to go above eighty. So I think they could hit a hundred million euros, is what I was reading today. Mm. But. And I think following the news that Sadio Mane has been sold for forty-five, is it? No, I think it's less than that, isn't it? More like twenty. Oh, really? That yeah, low? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I think they made a, like a seven million pound loss on him okay. in a year, which actually is not bad for Bayern, considering how average he was for the second half of last but year. That fee's only going one way. Yeah, it's going straight back out the door. No, absolutely. It? Yeah, on on any strike, even I, if it's not Kane. I think he's on six hundred and fifty k a week. That's that's what he's about to earn. Sadio Mane uh, on or Harry Kane. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, Sadio Harry Mane. Kane will be earning similar fees. No, he'll be earning five hundred k a week. I reckon Harry Kane. No. At Bayern. Yeah, I don't think. What so. are you on about? That's a joke. You don't that's think Harry Kane's going to be on Bayern half a million? Bayern do not pay half a million he'll a week. And what are you on about? Max. Yeah. I think I don't even, even I more. don't even know who Bayern's highest earner would be. I'd be well, I'd be amazed want... if it's over three hundred and fifty. Yeah, yeah, but he will be the highest earner. At the he's, club. No, he, yeah, he might be the highest arrival. He, he might definitely be. He might be the highest earner, but he's not going to be on half a million a week. Bayern, Bayern, don't do that. I, I could see that happening. I could see. I could see. But my thing would be, why would he not do that? If you want to sign me, I'll, I'll sign for you. But I want it's to be. So if he signed on a free, if he signed on a free, but it, it, they're not going to do that if they've also spent what did we say 100 million euros on him I think he'll 400, 500 mil- grand a week I've dropped my Bayern fans there. let me know let us know who is the highest that, earner at Bayern that would make him not, I think that's bonkers that would make him the highest earner in the Premier League by 120 grand no, would, how much uh, Harlan's earning about 800 grand a week that's not, no, he's not. not true he where, are you, where, yes, is, where are you getting all these numbers from every time Harlan scores plonker. they have to pay him about a million quid what tabloids have you been reading on the Honestly. way in I think if it's Harry Kane goes to Bayern he's <laughs> going to be by far their top earner I think people were saying over the weekend people were saying over the weekend he needs to cool down <laughs> I saw loads of people saying about the Harlan, the Hoyland versus Kane. Why aren't United just spending the extra money and getting Harry Kane? If United were signing Kane, they'd be paying him upwards of half a million pound a week. Yeah, you would. I just don't think Bayern, Bayern will that. be paying the same. Uh, no, I don't think so. Okay, either way, we're, we're just guessing here, aren't we? Yeah. We are just guessing. Either way, I think that if I was a gambling man now, I bet this still gets done. Fine, I say no. Henry, you got the deciding vote on this panel. I think it gets done. It's getting done next week. Next week? Not next week. It's getting done <laughs> by the end of the window, sorry. Okay. Yeah. Well, while we're on the topic of Sadio Mane going out to uh, Al Nasser, I mean, what a disappointing yeah. time he's had a, in Bavaria. Took a big gamble on him as well because they rarely sign players into their 30s as well. Started quite well and then from, I think it was around just before the World Cup, just really dropped out of favour. Picked up an injury in the second half of the season. Tuchel didn't seem to rate him. Yeah. I mean, his stats weren't a total disaster, but anyone that watched them regularly last year will know that he was the most disappointing of their forwards by yeah. quite a distance. Yeah, it's, it's weird, isn't it? Because, I mean, Riyad Mahrez has gone out there as well. Mm. The wide talent just getting hoovered up at the moment. The ageing wide talent by the Saudis. Yeah. Um, Firmino as well. Yeah, I don't... I th- it's fine, like... His place at Liverpool was so reassured for so long. Yeah. And he's gone into that Bayern side where there's quite a lot of competition on the wings and... I don't know. I think having been part of that almost Liverpool family, and yeah, I, I think the change is almost too much. So yeah, this this is such a get out of jail for Bayern Munich because yeah. they were paying him big money to be there as well, and they managed to shift him. Yeah. So it's unbelievable. And that fight with Sane as well. Well, what do you think about the Mara's replacement? Now that that's been confirmed over the weekend, it's all a bit quiet on that front. I think Pep did say he was going to have a look at the market, didn't he? Um, Mara's replacement, imagine to say to replace Real Mara's. Who do you think it should be? Oh, have they have they bought someone? No, no. no. I've said, who do you think oh, should I thought, be headers? I thought you were saying you're like, that. You're like a star rabbit. Like, have like, have they bought someone? No, so, no, no. Who do you no. think it should be? Because obviously linked to Elise. Oh, I don't know if Elise. I mean, I like, that would be a fun move. Oh, who do we talk about on the short? Elise, Elise does match up with everything that Maris is good at. We talked about this last week on Monday Vibes, actually. Um, the right wing position is so hard. There's just yeah, not much there's choice. not that much quality in there. I mean, Chuck Vasey would have been a quite an interesting option, just as a complete, yeah, 
wild card to have there, but he's obviously gone to Milan. Olise is probably the most similar player to Mares in terms of his skill set. Even watching them play, he almost has, yeah, looks very, very similar. Um, but I do think that injury issues, and he did have a reputation as being quite a difficult character in his early days as well, um, particularly at Reading. So, yeah, I'm not sure whether Elise is a perfect fit for Man City. Yeah. Uh, let's carry on across Europe then. Nico Gonzalez has gone to Porto. This is a done confirmed Bombatsa. Yeah, I think, um, yeah, very small fee. I think it was like 8.5 million euros. Yeah. Barca have got a buyback clause, which is active till 2025. Nico Gonzalez was really highly rated when he first broke through, but unfortunately, Gavi, Pedri, they've gone ahead of him. They kept on signing midfielders as well, like Kessie. You know, it just got more and more crowded in that area. And when De Jong didn't leave, went on loan to Valencia last year, was fine. Um, but Porto <laughs> needed a new midfielder as well because Mateus Uribe went to El Sad in Qatar. Brilliant. So bringing in Nico Gonzalez, younger player, for a very cheap fee. Yes, there's the sell-on clause in there, but I think this is just quite sensible from Porto. And hopefully he can... Uh, really fulfill his potential over there. I thought he looked good, you know. I mm. thought when he was coming through that Barcelona side, not last year, the season before, he looked good. And I, I think Porto is probably the perfect place to go and sort of get minutes. And they needed the signings though, because Benfica have had a really good win though. Mm. They got you and Di Maria, they brought the left back in as well, haven't they? Yeah. Like some talent going to be, like to the Portuguese league. Usually they're such good exporters, but yeah. some real high level talent going I mean, Benfica there. got cash to burn, don't they? And yeah. like, but the profile of players they've gone for are really impressive. I'm, I'm excited for the next year. Yeah, uh, final couple of moves we want to speak about then. Uh, a couple of old favourites, James Rodriguez and Edison. To and you're all over this. You no, this. So someone, it is cool. I saw it someone, is cool someone in the comments was like, oh, you never talk about South American transfers. And to be fair, this is fun. Like James Rodriguez to Sao Paulo. Uh, and yeah. then and then Edinson Cavani to Boca Juniors. He's gonna look great in that shirt. That, yeah, it is a cool. It's a cool move. He's the best looking it? shirt in world football. Like, just and look, he's one of the best looking blokes. Edison. Absolutely. Luis Suarez has been eating goals for fun at Gremio. <laughs> and like Cavani in a in a Boca shirt. Uh, yeah, I think that's gonna be wicked. And then Hammers as well. Like, I just want to see Hammers just play good football and enjoy himself. Like, because he's been so. It's been so weird. Like, he had that good moment at Everton, didn't he? And then was basically like, Carlo. Forced, yeah, and then was forced out. Uh, not forced out, but it clearly just didn't want to be there when it, Carlo Ancelotti wasn't there. Went to what? I think it was like Qatar mm. last this year. This is his 10th different countries played in. Is that true? Yeah. That's, That's wild. He's not even ridiculously old either. Right. Like it's, he's had such an odd career. But yeah, so Sao Paulo, big club. Boca 2, great stuff. Yeah. All right, there we go. That's another episode of Monday Vibes, transfer-wise. Uh, we don't have too many transfer Monday Vibes left. No. We'll be coming up to the new well, we season. We could do some transfers and results, I suppose. Yeah, we'll probably do a mixture of results and transfers. I suppose next Monday Vibes, you see, will be the first results-based title because it might be after the Community Shield. Oh, yeah. yeah, what, yeah, yeah. what a game. I was thinking what's so, happening next weekend. Yeah, who is Community the Community Shield. Shield between? Arsenal and City. Arsenal and City. Because obviously City won the treble. I was a bit yeah. confused there. But yeah. second place in the Premier League takes on the FA Cup winners, is it? Okay. Absolutely. So there we go. Arsenal versus Manchester City. We'll talk about, I'm sure, on next week's Monday Vibes, as well as the latest and greatest transfer rumours. Stay tuned throughout the rest of the week. Uh, I think we're doing another transfer talk, are we? Yeah, this I'll week. Don't see why not. I think we'll be moving people around. Uh, <laughs> Looking uh, at George. Is that, is that <laughs> we'll also be doing Continental Club. We're not too sure. There'll be a lot of good videos coming your way. So make sure you subscribe to Football Daily. Hit the like button. We'll see you later.